Fred was the most wonderful teacher and friend in the world. Fred was very demanding. What he wanted was the best that anyone, everyone could give. And if you didn't give your best or were slacking off or were careless or were not thinking through what you were supposed to be doing, you probably would not come back on the show. You wouldn't work again as an actor or as a technician or whatever. Fred had a monumental temper. He had a volcanic temper. It was always triggered by inefficiencies, carelessness, things like people walking around in the studio making a little bit of noise during rehearsal. Fred would charge up beside me and reach down between the technical director and me and press the button and, and scream into the microphone. Who is that walking around down there? Get his name. I want him off the show. I don't want to see him in the studio ever again. And uh, boy, when that uh, voice echoed around the studio a few times, it made a very uh, specific note. People did perform professionally. The one aspect of Fred's career, I guess, that uh, sort of triggered his explosions more than any other was the sound man. Sound effects going wrong would set Fred off like a rocket. I think he had had some bad problems with sound men once upon a time. I remember one of our early shows, we had a little piece of film of an, a dummy falling out of a window, supposed to be a, a body, and hitting on the pavement of New York. But the sound effects came about t uh, a split second before the body hit the surface. And Fred was to be fit to be tied, but that sort of thing would, uh, would trigger it. But Fred was uh, a wonderful, creative producer. He was the best director in television. And he returned to the hot seat and would direct an occasional show just to give us a week off, which we desperately needed, when there were just two of us doing alternate shows every other Sunday night. And the whole two weeks preceding, we were casting and rehearsing and planning. Uh, Fred's task as a producer-director was, to, I think, to overcome his own basic knowledge that he was a good director. He wanted to direct. He liked directing. He liked working with actors. But to pull that back and not impose himself upon us as the directors. He never uh, scolded us for a mistake. He never screamed or yelled at us or the actors. Uh, it was always the technicians. Uh, he had hired us, obviously, to learn to direct his way, which was a certain kind of camera work. He liked low cameras to see the eyes of the actors. He liked shots well matched from cut to cut. He liked over shoulders to be not a whole hunk of a back and a small face opposite. He wanted that camera framed very very tightly on the foreground figure and the emphasis on the face facing the camera and any numbers of things of that nature that he just drilled into us. He did not like unnecessary camera moves. He did not like unnecessary camera cuts. If we take a shot in rehearsal on a Saturday afternoon, many is the time, there would be a little bit of a pause and Fred would sort of say in my ear, uh, Pappy, do you really like that shot? And so very soon I learned to say, no, God, no, Fred, I hate the shot. What's wrong with the shot? And then he would suggest something. And he was always right. I remember one show that I did when Fred was not there for the Saturday rehearsal. It was a courtroom scene. And I had very artfully planned the show for panels behind the jury and behind the judge to be there so that cameras could come through those camera ports to give angles on the participants in the trial. And I had blocked the show, it was a whole act of, of one show, uh, crossing the line so that people who were looking to the left should be looking to the right. If you orient off where the audience knows they are in the, in the courtroom and where the preceding shot had showed them to be, and they're looking right to left, suddenly when you take the close shots, they were looking left to right. Well, Fred hit the ceiling, and rightly so, and I didn't realize what I was doing. And he made me sit down right then and there and change every one of those shots between rehearsals before we went into dress rehearsal. 
And I was able to do it, fortunately, and cut this shot and put it on this camera and put this on this camera and give the notes to the cameraman. And he was absolutely right. But aside from that monumental transgression on my part, it was a dumb thing to do. And I just uh, was not paying enough attention. He would never take that kind of, uh, of note or that kind of tone. I remember once we, we did get into an argument on a very early show. Um, it, was called, it was a show about Jefferson Davis before and after the Civil War. And the whole Civil War was shown to the audience by means of a Confederate battle flag flying, floating in the breeze, run by a, a string and a prop man pulling the string. Names of battles supered along the bottom of the screen, one after another. The strains of Dixie swelling up and smoke rising to fill the screen and sort of uh, eradicate the flag which slowly drooped as the battles marched on and Dixie slowed down and you finally came to Appomattox and the flag dropped and the smoke filled it and you were through with the, with the montage. Well, it's intensely complex. We had some film to super, we had to keep the flag flying, you had to make the smoke the right amount of density and get it up there at the right time and timing it with the music. And it did not work in rehearsal and it didn't work in the, uh, the run through. So now we're only about two hours away from airtime and Fred was saying, Pappy, you gotta, you gotta have to cut that thing down, it's not gonna work. I said, Fred, it'll work, it'll work. I know that it'll work. It's just a matter of my doing it. He said, I think you ought to change it. And we went through dress rehearsal. And again, it did not work. It was just screwed up to a fairly well. And Fred said, Pappy, cut the montage. I said, no, Fred, God damn it, I'm not gonna cut it. I know I can do it. He said, all right, go ahead and do it. Very much to say, <laughs> I've got your number, Charlie. So I took a deep breath and we did the montage and it worked. It worked absolutely as it should have. And as soon as I got up out of the chair for the commercial break, Fred came up behind me and patted me on the shoulder and gave me a handshake. And I said, thank you.